In this video, I'm gonna try to beat both Bodice Sisters, Chess.com, Chess Bots, and I'm gonna comment it all along the way to make it as interactive and enjoyable for you as possible. So, let's get started. So, I'm gonna just start the game here. And I'm gonna comment everything along the way. Let's play black against Andrea first, and then we are gonna play white against Alexandra. So, okay, she starts with a move d4, and I'm gonna just play d5. Let's try to be solid here, e6. So, as black, I'm always trying to be as aggressive as possible if I play uh, slightly lower uh, rated players and I play this bishop b4 which is kind of a Ragozin defense if white plays knight f3 and she prefers to start with e3 instead so yeah it's completely possible I'm gonna just play knight f6 bishop goes to d3 so now it's kind of a Nimzu Indian defense with this d5 there are a lot of transpositions it doesn't really matter that much okay she plays knight f3 now it's more of a normal Rogozin defense. I play this b6, bishop b7 line, and I want to put my knight to e4 eventually. Takes on d5. Actually, I have to say that Andrea Chessbot uh, plays incredibly well so far. Uh, here, now queen b3, a little bit weird since it doesn't create any threats for me, but it stops knight e4. Maybe that was the idea. And in case of uh, c5, yeah, it's actually a tricky move. Uh, white takes and I can't take it back with a pawn because my bishop is hanging. So c5 wouldn't be a good choice here. Instead, I'm gonna just continue my development. Remember, as I'm always telling you, the development is uh, the most important thing in the opening. You should try to develop all of your pieces as fast as possible and as active as possible. Yeah, an important thing I forgot here is to play a6 to make sure that nobody is coming to b5. but. Yeah, I just step back to e7 and play a6 and bishop d6 back, so I am not sure that it changed anything. Also, I can use the fact that the knight is not on c3 now, not attacking the pawn on d5 anymore and play knight e4 immediately. The drawback is that, um, well, he, she can play rook c1 and put some pressure on my c4, c7 pawn, but I can play c5, threaten on c4 and yeah, now the, my bishop is not under attack since the knight is covering it, basically blocking white's queen, so... Yeah, I'm not sure which one to start with. I like knight e4, it's a very aggressive, very active move. Yeah, and she goes back to uh, c3, but... Well, at least I can protect now with my uh, second knight here. And now the d5 pawn is protected. And at some point I can take something and she just lost a tempo here with this knight <coughs> v5 and knight c3 back. Well, yeah, my bishop is not that active, but I don't know. I want to prepare the move c5. I really want to make it possible somehow. So maybe queen, yeah, queen d7 runs into knight e5. That would be unfortunate for me. So maybe I just put the bishop back, but then once again, knight b5 is coming. So I have to play a6 first. That is the right way to go about it. Okay, she goes back, but, that, but now I can play c5. Everything is protected, knight takes is impossible, bishop takes, I get a bishop spare, so c5 move is on my agenda. Of course, I could have played rook c8 before, I can play it now. Yeah, of course, Andrea is playing very good, very solid here, all of the pieces in the center, that's usually what I try to teach people to uh, develop all of the pieces towards the center and just develop all of the pieces because a lot of people are just forgetting about it and that's the most important thing you should do in the beginning of the game. So yeah, let me bring more pieces following my own advice. I guess the problem for white is this knight, uh, is this bishop on d2 because it's blocking uh, white pieces, it's very passive and of course I don't want to take it because my knight on e4 is very powerful. Now I can exchange and open up the C file for, for my rook, but that would give a beautiful outpost on D4 for White's knight. So let me continue my development probably. Maybe put the bishop back to D6. Okay, she takes on C5 now and I can just grab it 
back, everything is protected. So I'm not really sure why she did that. Okay, but now I can just take it. I can't believe it. Seems like I'm winning a piece. Yeah, because of this bishop on d2, I mean, if not for this bishop, the bishop could, uh, the bishop from d3 could go away attacking my rook. Uh, sorry, attacking my queen with the rook, but now, yeah, just too slow and I have time for taking one of the pieces. I just need to be a little bit careful with the d-file, with my queen. I can also just play queen, no, queen e7 would be a bad move because of bishop takes f6. But I can take the knight, for example, why not? I don't see any problem with that. Well, you can take on, uh, on f6 and then on h7, but that's just a pawn. She played bishop f5, which is actually a very good move. It's attacking my rook and uh, opening the rook finally. So the good thing about this whole um, variation is that white's bishop is now incredibly active. And I have a little bit of difficulty here. I like the move knight d5, but yeah, my rook is hanging. Not sure that I have time to go somewhere. I, I can play rook c6 just protecting the <coughs> the bishop making sure that everything is okay with it because well bishop e4 is never a problem thanks to my knight and if he exchanges then I get rid of the pin so let me play rook c6 I'm gonna try to save all of my material and now I'm gonna get rid of this pin and yeah seems like everything is protected and then I can just enjoy my extra piece can put the rook back to c7, protecting the b7 knight, uh, sorry, bishop one more time and opening up this bishop here. Seems like a very good thing to do. Alternatively, I can play c4, but yeah, I don't want to do it for now. So let me just put the rook back. Yeah, okay, but now the diagonal is opened and I can, I mean, this diagonal, this long one, it's just a beautiful one for the bishop and I can use the bishop now to play knight e4, which seems to be the most active move here. And if she takes, I can take it back with the queen and creating some checkmating ideas. Okay, bishop to c, uh, bishop to a5, chasing this rook on c7. But maybe I, maybe I can ignore it and play queen h4 and just mm, play for the checkmate. Now doesn't feel that great. Yeah, so somehow my pieces are not having a lot of squares here. Because the rook can go back to c8. I can play c4, so attacking this queen, and then I'm preparing the move rook to c5. That's something I like. Let's see. Rook takes c4, yeah, but now I can just exchange. And get rid of this rook, which was my main problem. And, well, I have lost a pawn, of course, but still, it's an extra piece. Maybe I'm gonna just put my, uh, my bishop back and basically threaten a knight to d6. I quite like this idea, but yeah, I'm under rook d7. It's very unfortunate. Do I have knight d6 still? I hope so. Rook takes a 7, knight takes c4. Rook takes b7 and I have knight takes a5 in the end of the day. And then game, yeah, should still be better for me, but not so clear. Queen c5 is another opportunity because then queen takes knight takes and the knight protects the bishop on b7 and attacks the um, the rook on d7, but I just didn't want to exchange the queens in the first place, but it seems like I don't have any choice anymore. Yeah, queen c5 seems to be the best move here. Bishop e6, wow, that's something incredible. So the first question is, can I just take it? Queen takes e6, I understand it's very scary, but... Ah, okay, queen takes e6, king h8, and rook takes b7, that's the problem. I do have some checks, queen c1, king g2, but I don't see any real follow-up. Yeah, 
Bishop b6 is an incredibly creative move, I have to give credit here. But I can still take on c4 and go knight c5, which was my initial idea. What else do I have? I have queen takes a5 because the bishop is actually hanging. And that also threatens queen to e1 check. And then f2 pawn is hanging and probably checkmate is just there after knight g3. So I, I really like uh, queen takes a5. Since the knight on e4 is protected, that's my main uh, piece here. And if you take the bishop, then I'm already coming with queen takes a uh, queen to e1 check. There is queen f1, but I can just exchange the queens and then take <coughs> the bishop on f7. But she can start with a move bishop to, takes f7 check. I can't take it because of the checkmate. And if I go to h8, she can then take here. And after queen e1, she has queen to f1. And then it seems like I don't have a really good follow up. Can I improve the variation somehow? Yeah, it seems like I have knight d6 there, either after the exchange or just uh, immediately forking those pieces. Okay, let me just take. I hope this variation was more or less understandable for you. Let me now try it. So I guess bishop takes f7 must be played. Yeah, and she said check. She's trying to scare me. Yeah, and now my idea was to play knight d6 at some point, but I'm not sure uh, whether I want to do it immediately or... Seems like queen e1 uh, is provoking queen f1, because otherwise white is getting checkmated. And then after the exchange I have knight d6 with a fork and I'm winning a piece. Yeah, so this variation seems to be great, because afterwards I'm two pieces up. And that is of course should be more than enough to win the game. Okay, she plays bishop d5, but now I'm taking this one and I have an extra rook. And of course, it doesn't matter how many extra pawns she has, the rook is the rook. I just need to be a little bit careful, maybe not blunder another pawn here. And okay, let's exchange it. Yeah, well, there might be some kind of uh, fortress eventually, especially if now she plays b5 and bishop c6. Yeah, maybe it's not that simple as I thought. Should be. So, yeah, bishop c6. Now she prepares this move. Uh, uh, b5. Maybe I have the move g5. I was wondering because after takes, I have bishop takes c3 using this pin here and attacking the f2 and g5. But I'm a little bit scared that I'm gonna exchange too many pawns and then it might become difficult. But yeah, let me try. She's gonna take, I suppose. No, she's not taking. Okay, then I just take this guy. And I don't have the move f3 because she just takes it back. So let me just improve my king. Remember that the king is a very important piece in the end game, so you might want to activate it. Let's go to h6, trying to catch this pawn on h4. Yeah. But now I can take on e3 and then play rook e8 and then win this pawn on, uh, on uh, e3. Maybe not because of king f3 or king d3. But at least, I mean, the spawn on b5 is also weak now, I can attack it. So let me exchange this guy. To open up more files. Yeah, and now she is giving me this e3 pawn, and then I should also win this one, and then this pawn should be good enough to promote. Now the b5 pawn is hanging. Okay, let's just bring it back. And then, yeah, the task should be relatively simple. I'm gonna just push my pawn all the way to the h1. Yeah, okay, check, need to step back. Well, I need to be a little bit careful here because she's gonna guard this h3 square, not allowing me to play h3 and she's gonna take wherever I go there. So I need to be a little bit creative. First of all, I can give a check here. Yeah, now she goes back and then I can play h3. King g2 would have been a little bit better, but then still I could find a way to promote the pawn. 
Now I can just play h2 and rook b1 and I'm promoting it. Yeah, the rest is very simple, just a checkmate with the bishop and the rook. And finally I'm pushing the king to the corner and then I should be able to give a checkmate. Let's put it on d3, king d1, and now bishop to d4, king e1, and rook c1, checkmate. Okay, so that was the match against Andrea, we have won here, and now let's go on and fight against Alexandra. Okay, so let's continue. This time I'm gonna play against Alexander Botes in the second game. I'm gonna play as fight. Alexandra is stronger than her sister. At least her chess.com bot says that her rating is much higher. So yeah, let me try to outplay her. Okay, um, d4 is 6, knight f3, and knight f6. I'm gonna play c4. I'm gonna try to be as active as possible b6 okay kind of a tricky line trying to uh, prevent this move e4 but not playing d5 at least not immediately okay i'm gonna play g3 it's one of the main lines here bishop goes to g2 she could have played bishop a6 attacking this pawn on c4 bishop b4 check i usually like to play knight d2 here in many lines and then attack this this bishop with a3 okay she is incredibly aggressive but I'm gonna just, I don't know if I need to play a3, I just want to castle here. Yeah, I understand I allow a lot of like, changes here, but doesn't seem like a big problem for me. And now maybe a3, pushing this bishop back or provoking an exchange, okay. Um, can I maybe play knight e5 or something like that? Trying to create a pin here because the bishop on b7 is hanging. But knight takes d2, bishop takes b7, knight takes f1, bishop takes a8. Yeah, probably it should be better for me. Of course, he can just defend the pawn, something like f5, but then I can attack it once again. So let me try. I always have a safe option of taking back this knight on d2 if she takes. Okay, she plays d5 immediately. <coughs> but then I was going to attack it once again. Yeah, now she can exchange. But still, the pawn on d5 is pinned. My pieces are a little bit more active. f6. Yeah, I just wanted to go back to d3. But then I'm not attacking the knight on e4 anymore. But the knight on d3 should be good. Let me try it. I'd c6, that's attacking my pawn on d4, that would be horrible to blunder. For example, knight xc4, knight xd4, boom, and now I have a huge problem here in the center of the board, so I can never allow that. I must defend it. But if I defend it, I don't see a good follow-up for this knight to go, because it, it doesn't have any squares, to be honest. So I'm gonna just grab more space here with the move b4. And look at my knight on d3, it's actually a very good knight standing here. She played a5, well, I was going to play b5. Yeah, the knight should go back, and the knight is incredibly passive. I mean, maybe she wants to go knight c8 and knight d6, but it takes a lot of time, and then also c5 would be coming. I really want to play c5, I can't do it right now because the pawn is hanging. So I have to play a4 first, and then she can take on c4. But yeah, I can go back to e5, I can take on e4 at some point. So let me just start with a4, trying to stabilize here, making sure that b5 pawn is protected. Okay, c5. Yeah, it's getting even sharper. Of course, she tries to prevent my c5 pawn because then I would be just too active. But still, the slide on a7 is incredibly passive. The question is, how do I use it? It's not that simple. Maybe I take on c5, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, and I have something like knight b3, and I still want to play c5 uh, at all cost, basically. That's gonna help black to create uh, some interesting ideas along the c file, but... 
I also get some advantages. Yeah, let me take. I mean, I can start this bishop a3 first, putting more pressure, but after rook c8, it's more or less the same thing. And I'm gonna also be pinned, so let me just take it. Okay, knight takes c5. Now I can not only take here, but also play knight e5. But I really wanted to use this uh, moment to play knight xc5 and knight b3. Maybe the problem is that she's not gonna go anywhere with the bishop, but she's gonna play rook c8. And then if I take, she takes back and I have a problem with my c4 pawn. Huge problem, actually. So how do I deal with that? I can start with uh, bishop to a3, but it doesn't really help. Maybe I'm gonna just play uh, bishop b2 here. Activating my bishop, making sure that it's a very strong one. Okay, she takes my knight, I have to take back. What is the plan here? Taking here. Okay, but to say the least, I have this exchange and the knight takes c4 and the knight is great on c4 attacking the b6 pawn and the knight on a7 is still incredibly weak there. I also have uh, queen takes d8 and bishop takes b7 then I get a pair of bishops but of course I lose this knight on d2 and then I'm just a pawn down. Yeah, okay, in every case I have to take or do I? Wait a second, do I have queen takes c4? No, probably not. Bishop takes g2 and then the knight is still hanging. Uh, queen takes e6, rook f7. Yeah, I have to take. If I go to c3, uh, threatening checkmate in one, then there is bishop f6, unfortunately. I have uh, to take this guy. Yeah, now rook a takes d8. And somehow her pieces are starting to be very active. And I have to decide what do I take. I guess I'm gonna just take the pawn on c4 because my knight is great and the position should be just better for white thanks to this weakness on b6 and thanks to the fact that the knight on a7 is incredibly passive. Now I have to fight for this d-file. Yeah, but rook d5 is actually strong. Maybe I can play bishop to a3. By the way, I could have played it immediately, maybe that was even stronger. But let me... Yeah, now it's not that great, actually. I guess I missed my chance. Here. I mean, if I take, still it's gonna be an isolated pawn. I could go knight d2, knight b3 and then try to play against this pawn. Maybe that's the best strategy because, well, I still have some time while black is consolidating the pieces. Yeah, now let's put maybe the rook on to d1 because... because the pawn on d5 is incredibly weak. And also this knight on a7, look at it, it has no moves to go at all. <coughs> but maybe her idea is to play rook c2, attacking the bishop and then Rook a2 attacking this a4 guy. But I thought I'm gonna be the first one. So rook, knight f3, rook c2, bishop d4 attacking here, uh, rook a2, and I'm taking here and I'm threatening to uh, win this knight. The knight can go to a, into c8. And then this pawn will be very strong, like bishop c8 and, and b6. Okay, so let me go for it. So knight seems to be very good on f3. Potentially some ready to jump somewhere. Now bishop d4. Yeah, the problem is she can play knight c8 first and then I don't really have a good follow-up. So maybe I play bishop e5 and I'm attacking this pawn on d5 instead. That should be more dangerous for her. Because I'm also creating a lot of pressure against the king. Ah, okay, bishop d5. Yeah, somehow, <coughs> somehow my e3 pawn is very weak. How do I deal with that? I have knight e1. 
should have played knight b3 instead of instead of knight f3. Knight on f3 is unlucky somehow. I do have rook d8, uh, rook d2 now, but doesn't feel to be that great. And the problem is if I follow my plan with rook takes d5, then bishop takes e3, and then rook takes f2 is a threat, and she wins my, my knight on f3. So it's not like I achieve much. I can just play bishop d4, I mean, it's always safe for me, but I didn't want to do that. Maybe I should. I also have knight d4, maybe that's a good move. Because once the rook is going away, I have knight xf5, and the knight is protecting the e3 pawn. And if she takes, then I have a much better bishop. Okay, so let me try knight d4, it's a move with a tempo. It's always great to, to make a move with a tempo. Okay, she takes like that, but now I can play rook takes d4 and I'm still attacking this d5 pawn and I don't see a good way to defend it. Ah, okay, the king is coming. Yeah, now my, my bishop is a little bit unfortunate, so maybe I should start with uh, bishop to b8. With the tempo and now I can finally take it. Okay, so I got some advantage, but I still need to be a little bit careful here, a little bit precise, because I have some weaknesses. I like the move rook to d8 or maybe even rook to e5, king has to go to f6 not to lose another pawn and then rook to e8 because still knight d6 is not possible, knight e7 would be possible. Yeah, I don't know to be honest which move is better here. Maybe just rook d8 because then if the knight is going away I have rook d6. And otherwise, I attack this knight, not allowing this rook to get the pawn. Okay, how do I proceed? He put some pressure on the pawn on a4, maybe just h4 for now. Yeah, h6. How do I make any progress? That's the question. I wanted to put my bishop back to f4, just trying to uh, make sure that it's secure there and uh, maybe I also have the b8 square for the rook potentially. He goes to f6. Yeah, I feel like I have to play the move h5 just to stop this g5 idea. Also from a strategic point of view seems like a good move because now g7 pawn will be always weak there. So I'm playing rook g8. And now rook h8 because uh, the knight can go to g6 now. It can go to e7, that's true. But I was hoping to create some pressure over here. <coughs> the knight is going to g5 so, so maybe I start with rook d8. And I stop knight to d5. And if king goes to e6 uh, I have rook d6 check. But he, she's just taken here. Okay, but rook d6. I hope I... I'm winning this guy and I still have a check here so I deal with this pin and the king goes to e6 offering me this g7 pawn but then yeah, I have to allow the straight and you know that rooks and game are often uh, very drawish but this case, in this case I should have a lot of extra pawns so let me go for it it's gonna be very instructive Hopefully the rooks and game are always the most difficult ones, so let me just do it. And yeah, she just goes a4, not even bothering taking this guy on b5. But I was hoping to be in time with rook g6, then takes, and then going back to a6, and then don't really see why I can't do that. Because rook a6 is unstoppable, and then I'm in time to cage that pawn, but I have my own Passer. Ah, okay, she goes that way and she's helping her pawn with a king. That's actually very dangerous. I'm gonna play rook a6. King takes b5. Okay, that's pretty annoying. But now my pawn also runs here. Yeah, so that's why rook e4. And if I go h6, probably it's too early after rook. No, rook e6 is not possible. I have h7. So rook e7, and then I'm not in time to help my pawn. So I have to run with my king. 
And then at some point I'm just sacrificing the rook for this pawn and hope that, well, this whole uh, group of pawns will promote somehow. Because she needs a lot of tempi. She needs another tempo to play king b3 and only then she attacks, I mean, she creates a threat of uh, rook a4 and I have to sacrifice my rook. But I can play h6 right now because my king is already uh, there to help to protect the pawn. Yeah, now she doesn't have this idea anymore. So I can just bring my king. Maybe take another pawn here. I don't see any reason not to take. And king b2, yeah, she needs two more tempi and it's just too much. I can just play king g6. Wow, well, that's just given me a free pawn and now the game is over. But anyway, well, it's just too many pawns. Something is going to promote here. Just don't need to blunder with my rook. Uh, with rook a7 and otherwise those pawns are just going to promote. So yeah, now hopefully it's going to be fast and simple. There is no way to stop all of the pawns. Okay, maybe I should stop promoting my pawns and just deliver a checkmate. So that's it. Here you have it. We managed to win here both, both as sisters. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was instructive for you to understand my decision-making process along the way a little bit. And well, hit the like button if you found it entertaining and instructive. And write in the comments what you think about this format. Maybe you have some other uh, video ideas for me. Uh, what, what you think about this video, about my play, about this video. And well, hope to see you again. Thank you very much for watching.